Hi and welcome to my OCRA A-Level Biology Revision Session with me, Christine. So today's lesson I want to look at succession. So we know that ecosystems are dynamic as they are constantly changing. And because we know that, we can then use that in a way to identify the fact that ecosystems can change over time. That is what succession is. So succession is the process by which these ecosystems are going to change. So how do they change? How do they even start? Well, this comes from the fact that we start with bare rock, no soil or organic material. Now, this could be, for example, a volcanic eruption where the lava is flowing and that lava is now going to cool. It could be glacial retreat. It could be that the global warming that is occurring has caused the glaciers to melt and therefore we now have exposed rock. It could be that wind has blown sand which has been deposited. It could be that the rivers are flowing and they have deposited these silts and that has resulted in a formation of a rock. So we have the fact that we have this new area that needs to be colonized. Now the first organisms that are going to colonize this new site are called your pioneer species. So they are the likes of algae or lichen. Now these are very unique organisms because they are with able to withstand in inhospitable environments. So remember we talked about the lava really hot, the glacial retreat really cold, so these extreme temperatures and also and we're talking about bare rock. So there's no nutrients or very low levels of nutrients in the areas where they are going to colonize. Now they have some very advanced parts to them, which means that they can colonize these areas a lot quicker. Things like they produce large quantities of seeds or spores that will be distributed by the wind. And if they are blown onto these bare rocks, they will start to colonize. They have the fact that they can do rapid germination. Remember your plant response, germination, the process of germination. Well, these seeds can germinate very quickly, which means that they can start to colonize very quickly. They can do photosynthesis. So what that means is that they are able to obviously fix carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into producing these organic compounds. They also have the ability to fix nitrogen. So the fact that they are surviving in these inhospitable environments that only have carbon dioxide, light, nitrogen, and very little nutrients makes them ideal organisms for colonizing. So this is the starting point. Now the next thing that happens is this bare rock, if there is water getting into any cracks within the rocks, what's going to happen is that will start to do what's known as weathering. It will start to break up the rocks and this will start to form soil. Now this breaking up of the rocks is going to result in the organisms that are there being able to release any of their nutrients into the soil that's starting to form. Now, remember we had our pioneer species. Unfortunately, those pioneer species will not survive forever, they will die. And as they start to decompose, that starts to build up some of the hummus which is in the soil. Well, that therefore means that simple plants can now start to grow our mosses, our ferns. These are called secondary colonizers because they are colonizing. They're not the primary species. They are the secondary colonizers of the area. Now, these simple plants, these mosses and ferns are going to obviously be a bit bigger than our pioneer species. And so they're going to cast shade and that will actually further stop the growth of any of the lichen. What you then have is that these simple plants are going to start to put roots which are longer into the rocks, into the soils, and that's gonna further break up those rocks. And what that's going to result in is more organic matter increasing because these bigger plants are going to also die at some point. So what we have is this cycling of our nutrients into the soil. And as we're breaking up the rocks, as we're 
building up the soil, what we're also doing is we're meaning that the more water can be retained within the soil. And that therefore means the other intermediate colonies, these tertiary colonizers, things like grasses, small flowering plants, shrubs can start to grow. Now we tend to call your pioneer species pioneer species and anything from the pioneer species on we now call intermediate community. So what we have is larger plants starting to grow and because we're changing the species that are there, the plant species, we're now going to start to affect the animal species that are able to inhabit where these plants are being located. So these intermediate communities are going to be changing as these larger plants start to grow, as more of these animals start to be able to thrive and live within the area, what we're going to do is end up with these changes in the soil. It's also going to result in changes in these light conditions because as the plants grow larger, what that will then do is that will then start to cause shading effect of those larger plants on the smaller plants underneath and therefore start to kill them off. Well, remember if they're dying, what's going to happen? Decomposition, those nutrients that were stored in their biomass are going to be recycled back into the ecosystem. So this will keep going and keep going and we'll see this development of the ecosystem, these changes over time, and we'll end up getting to a point where eventually the whole area will be colonized by a dominant plant species and dominant animal species. And when we get to that point there, what we say is we've reached the climax community. Now, if we're looking in the UK, that climax community would be the likes of oak woodlands. But it's important to note that we as humans actually do things that halt this natural flow of succession. We prevent ecosystems from reaching climax communities and we can do that through the introduction of animals. So it could be that, for example, I live in Cambridge and between the end of April and the beginning of May, the tend to put the cows back out into our green areas to maintain our grassy areas at a level. So what they do is they halt the natural flow of succession by allowing these cows to go out and graze. What they'll also do is they'll trample and that trampling of the plant species is going to push them back down into the ground. They will be able to be decomposed, putting more nutrients back into the soil. So that's one way where we can actually halt the natural flow of succession. Another way is we can actually remove plants. So we can do the removal of plants if, for example, we want to grow crops in a field. If we're farmers, we want to remove any plant species that are not the ones we're interested in, we can remove those plants. Or it may be that we want playing fields for our football teams, for um, our rugby teams, we want all these different grassy areas and therefore we need to halt the natural flow of succession by cutting the plants that are there down to the grass level so that we can maintain a playing field that is able to be used by the children or adults who are using it. Another way we can do this is also through burning a forest to clear a space. Now, I will go into a whole different topic area on deforestation and timber production for sustainability when I do that video, so do check that one out. But what's really important for you to know is whatever the human activity is that they give you in your exam question, the important thing you note is we are halting that natural flow of succession. And what will then happen is we will, instead of reaching our climax community, we will get to a final stage, which is formed and known as the plagial climax. So it's important to remember that as you're doing this, we're talking about plants and animals. We're talking about biodiversity. We're talking about changes that are going to happen within these ecosystems. So it could be the natural flow of succession allows for those nutrients to be recycled, or it could be that actually we want to maintain biodiversity. So we want to manage the biodiversity within an area, hence us putting our cows into our grassy areas in Cambridge, that actually maintains the biodiversity 
within the ecosystems that are there. So I hope you've liked this video and if you have then please do click on the like button and subscribe to my channel and if you haven't already done so please do check out my revision platform www.aiqchat.com.